yeah. Be careful because stress is contagious. Intelligence for your life on the John Tesh Radio Show. Don't miss this stuff. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! You need an attorney? Go get one. Don't put it off. John Fuller is here to give you some answers to your legal questions. Maybe your question simply is, hey, this is what's going on. Do you think I need an attorney? That's a good idea to call John right now. Uh, John is an attorney here in Ocala at the law firm of Fuller & Fuller. This segment is called Legally Yours. And the phone number to make it yours is is, uh, 622-9622. Call John, ask you questions. He'll be answering them for the next 25 minutes. 622-WOCA. Good morning, John. How are you doing? Good morning, Larry. How are you? And good morning to the folks who are listening to us. It's it's good to be back live. I end up uh, sometimes being in court, and uh, I miss. Uh, I enjoy coming in. I'm very grateful to our listeners. Uh, we've got some, some really loyal listeners, and we welcome any of the new listeners who may be driving and, and listening. And uh, you know, we practice law. Janet Fuller, my wife and law partner, uh, and I at the law firm of Fuller and Fuller. We handle trial work in civil and commercial uh, litigation, personal injury Mm -hmm. with serious injuries, and Social Security disability. Uh, We do some uh, probate litigation and complex family law matters in addition to that. Uh, So if you have an area uh, where you've been hurt or you think you have a claim or a dispute in in a business matter uh, and we can help you, certainly call us uh, 352-547-4292 and we'll be glad to talk with you and then set an appointment because as we've discussed in this program uh, for, for almost the entire three years that we've been doing this, legal issues are controlled so much by the facts of the individual case it's it's not right, a right. it's not a formula you can't plug in something in a computer and get an answer it, it is dependent upon many many variables uh many shades of gray uh and and so you need to to have someone who can uh, assimilate all the facts do the appropriate legal research and, and, and answer your question. That's what an office conference is about. And if you do have a case or a friend or someone you know and you would like to speak with us, we'd be glad to, to help you with that. This show is an opportunity to talk about our legal system in general, uh, some legal principles uh, that might be affecting someone's daily lives, uh, and certainly uh, to talk about general concepts within the law. So we welcome callers. Uh, I uh, certainly uh, sympathize with you having to go through a bomb threat earlier this <laughs> yeah. week. I, I, uh, I, we were talking about it before we went on the air. I know that that has to be disconcerting, and I'm glad uh, that it was. It turned out uh, yeah, okay really. for everybody. Can, can, uh, would you recommend going to see an attorney if there was a non-combat related PTSD? Oh yes, like a car accident. Oh or, yes, or, I had a a uh, case a number of years ago uh, where a lady was in a severe car accident on I seventy five, and she suffered a closed head injury, and she ended up with post-traumatic stress disorder, hmm. which is a recognized uh, mental health diagnostic uh, condition, it falls under the general category of an anxiety disorder. And the, the symptoms are well documented. Uh, and of course, one of the, the big symptoms is re-experiencing the event yeah, yeah. Uh, or avoiding the circumstances that led to it. She was very fearful to get back in a car. Uh, she, If she went by the spot on I-75 where the accident occurred, she became nauseous. Oh, uh, I, I went through not the nauseous part, but just the nervous part of going back to a, a, and, a scene. Yes, there. and, and, uh, and that's, a, that's a component of damages in a negligence case. Uh, if, you, if you suffered an emotional damage, 
as a result of someone else's negligence. And in this case, the negligence was clear. Someone clipped the back of her car, and it flipped over two or three times. And she had wow. severe concussion. Wow. Wow. She had a, a, a small hematoma in her, in her brain, uh, which resolved itself after a period of time. But she was left with residual uh, cognitive impairments. Wow. In addition to a diagnosed condition of, of post-traumatic stress disorder. And so that was a very significant part of our damage claim for this lady uh, when we went to trial with it. And uh, Judge Victor Musley was the trial judge at that time. He's retired now, but he's still a senior judge. And we tried it here in Marion County for four or five days. Uh, so what... Uh, uh, yeah, you know that's why you need to talk with a lawyer because there are many, many elements of damages. It's it's not just do you have a broken bone or something well, obvious like that. Yeah, and I, but I think the average person would just say, well, it's just a broken bone. But but somebody else might say, you know, you're not the same person you used to be. Right. And and well, the brain injuries are extremely uh, complex. Uh, you know, I think. Most doctors would agree that we probably know less about the brain than any other organ system in the body right, because right. it is so complex, and it's not something that you can easily work on uh, while the patient is alive. And, yeah, that's true. and so one of the tools that we used in this case was to have this lady evaluated by a neuropsychologist and this is someone who's trained in psychology and specializes in injuries to the brain hmm. and they do this with a battery of different types of tests that they then interpret and they can determine what type of cognizant deficits the individual is suffering okay uh, because when you damage your 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 brain to the extent that you've lost some of your memory you've lost some of your iq uh, you've lost the ability to uh, balance your checkbook uh, that was something that she had trouble doing oh, wow. after the accident oh, wow. uh, you can't x-ray that no you can't, no, no you can't put a cat scan on that you can look and see if there's a physical injury to the brain like they did with her and they found the hematoma uh -huh. but to measure the injury to the brain is something that is very difficult to do yet she was more forgetful and she wasn't a real elderly lady or someone who would be suffering from some right. type of alzheimer's or dementia before the accident uh, but but these are very subtle sometimes slowly developing so symptoms. how do you settle it on a, on a dollar amount to, as far as a lawsuit goes if you don't if you can't even diagnose it how do you how well do you they can diagnose it with a neuropsychologist uh they they do these battery of tests and then you try to with the help of an economist uh if if this woman and she had had a job uh you know oh, okay and, and so she, how much she, she was lost? working and 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 she was unable she was a cashier uh she was unable to go back and she she could do it but it took her three or four times as long. Oh, wow. And oh, people wow. were stacked up in line behind her, and they finally said, look, this isn't working out. Oh, my goodness. So that's right. one way to do it. Uh, and then, then part of it is, and this is, what's the, this is the beauty of the jury trial system. Our jury are made up of folks from our community, ordinary right. people right. who come in and serve as a duty of citizenship to decide cases for people who are hurt. And it is the enlightened conscience of an informed jury of your peers who then determine what is a reasonable value for the things that are intangible. The inability to enjoy life, the limitations of the former activities of daily living that you used to be able to do, yeah, right, right. pain and suffering. The frustration of not being able to add up a, a, a column of three or four numbers and get the right answer until you do it about four or five times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those things uh, are they, they can cause depression. If you, sure, you, you know, this sure. lady was was certainly astute enough to know that her world had changed forever. And then on top of that, 
it, it's it's a, we we live in a mobile society. You know, where would we be without an automobile to go yeah, right. to go to work or go to the grocery store, go to church, you know, whatever, go to the doctor's office. And uh, you know, she was so fearful of driving, especially for a number of years after the accident, that she would have to impose upon family and friends wow. to drive her because she just could not bring herself to get back into an automobile. And and the experts, and we're very dependent upon expert witnesses, uh, psychiatrists, psychologists, neuropsychologists, yeah. neurologists, uh, people who who specialize in these areas, and it most certainly is not a precise science. Uh, it's, it's, they, they make decisions and opinions based upon their training, expertise, and scientific principles that have been previously uh, accepted and proven by other uh, experts in the field. We have to take a little break. If you want to call John, the number is 622-9622. Today's date, by the way, is March 25th, 2015. If that's the same date on your calendar, then you're listening to a live show. Your calls are invited. We'll be right back with John Fuller. 622-9622. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Times of clouds and sunshine are warm today. There may be a shower in spots along the coast, the high 80 at the coast, 85 inland. Tonight, partly to mostly cloudy with a brief shower or two, those ranging from the low 60s inland to about 70 along the coast. Tomorrow, clouds and some sun, windy and warm with a shower or two along the coast, the high 82 to 86. Friday, mostly cloudy, breezy and not as warm with a couple of showers and a thunderstorm highs in the upper 70s. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Joe Lundberg. Buried under receipts and confusing tax code, let Crippen and Company help. They work hard to make the tax preparation process as painless as possible. With offices in Ocala and the villages, their team is dedicated to helping clients with corporate and personal tax returns, bookkeeping for businesses, and estate planning for the future. Crippen and Company crafts a truly customized experience for each client's needs, while alleviating stress and creating a big picture of your overall financial health. Call 352-732-4260 or visit CrippenCPA.com to get started. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that. I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new Yep, truck. we can even do that too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. One of the most common questions those nearing retirement are asking, will I outlive my money? Retirement questions like these and many more will be answered every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on planning for a better and safer retirement with hosts Francois and Julian Pozzanetti. Francois and Julian will help you put your retirement puzzle together. Catch planning for a better and safer retirement Saturdays at 9 a.m. on Ocala's News Talk, the source 96.3 FM and 1370 a.m. You know, one, one of the reasons I love this show is because you demonstrate for us uh, how a good lawyer is a good lawyer. You have a way of thinking differently than the rest of us. And you, you pointed out during the break, if you don't mind me saying that, when the, your client had uh, a video being shown by the insurance company of her seeming to be functioning, all it's showing her is getting a, half, a quart of milk. It doesn't show what she's thinking. It doesn't show what she's afraid of. It doesn't show any pain. And, and you made that point to the jury. And... Uh, I presume she was very happy for that, for, the, was, for you bringing yeah, that up. It was a good outcome. But, you can't, you can't or I, don't, I don't think it's seemly to talk about results. It's been debated uh, ethically I, whether you talk about results or not. But, you know, I... You okay, know. But, but there was one factual thing you said also, is that you have, what, four years after an accident? Yeah, the statute of limitations after personal injury in the state of Florida, they're different in some states, is four years. So if it's a wrongful death case, if you're killed in the accident, it's two years. If you're killed. Yeah, if you're killed, you have two years because you don't have to worry about damages developing because you're dead, you're dead. Okay. Okay. Well, who, who actually would go to court then if you're The dead? personal representative of your estate. Oh, I see. Okay. They bring a wrongful death action on behalf okay. of the beneficiaries and the interested parties and the estate. But if, if something like post-traumatic stress disorder takes a while to develop, as we've heard many times from people in, in combat, mm -hmm. then it could happen in an accident two years later. Or, yes, or, or could just really be discovered. It's kind of maybe an emergent thing, yeah. and, and that's why you, you want to make sure that your client is, is you know, seeing a doctor, 
uh, making sure that they're, they're things. And you talk to their family, you talk to their neighbors, because they may not even be aware of it. And they say, you know, she's just not herself. Right, you know, right, right, she, right. she put the salt in the pepper shaker and the pepper in the salt shaker. Yeah, uh, yeah, you yeah. know, she she thought she was putting butter in the in the in the pan to fry an egg, and she put cottage cheese in it. Oh, uh, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, she's just not herself. Uh, you know, she couldn't find her car keys, and they were in the refrigerator. Uh, you know, uh, and your job to get—I mean—to get all that information out of the different people in her life or anybody's life. I'm not specific, no specific person in my question here, but I mean that's got to be a challenge for you. Well, that's part of the job is to go try to find the facts and then be able to present those facts in a persuasive, compelling fashion. Uh, uh, you know, I said the, the the truest form of justice is from an in, from from an, an enlightened jury uh, with with the facts and the information. Have you ever represented the insurance company side of a story? I have. Yeah, I've done a little everything in my career, and I've defended. You know, and wow, wow. and you know, and I and my and my approach to that because the plaintiff always goes first. One of my cl- kind of standard openings when I'm on the defense side is, folks, it's my turn now to talk with you, and I will be going second in this case. And I ask you to keep an open mind. I would remind you, it's a mighty thin sheet of paper that only has two side that only has one side to it. <laughs> right, that's very good. All right, we do have a phone call. Thank you for calling. You're on the air with John Fuller. Uh, yes, good morning, Mr. Fuller. Good morning, sir. See, uh, I, I want to uh, give you a situation here which happened uh, a few years back and see what you think about it. Uh, a person was going through at nighttime through an intersection and was T-boned. Uh, it, not at fault, but uh, during the investigation of the accident, uh, he, he was found that, out that he had been drinking and they gave, they gave him a warrant for a DUI. Would he have any liability on that accident if, if he had nothing to do with it but still had a DUI? Well, I would need more facts than that. Um, you have in a negligence lawsuit, one of the elements that you have to prove is causation. And if the accident was not caused, by the negligence of the party that was contributed to by having their faculties impaired by alcohol, then there is an argument that would not be. And I will give you a classic example. Uh, Several years ago, uh, someone uh, was driving DUI, and a pedestrian uh, walked right in front of the car. The car was being driven appropriately, the witnesses said. They were not speeding. They were not weaving. Uh, There was no evidence that the car was being operated in any kind of a negligent fashion. And the individual who was tragically killed stepped right in front of the car. Oh, boy. Whenever there's a death, they always draw blood and do a blood alcohol test on the blood serum. And the driver of the car had a blood alcohol level that was above the threshold for DUI. Okay, so they charged that individual uh, with a criminal case, DUI manslaughter or vehicular homicide. I can't remember, or maybe both. You know, sometimes they do both. Uh, And the case was ultimately dismissed on what was called a C4 motion in criminal law. It's like a summary judgment motion in in, uh, civil law because there was no evidence to prove the elements of the crime. That's Latin called corpus delicti. And there was no evidence to prove that the driving of the vehicle with the impairment caused the accident. It was absolutely unavoidable. And quite frankly, I think my recollection is, and this has been a case a long time ago, the individual um, who walked in front of the car on autopsy uh, had a number of, of illicit drugs in oh, his really? system, too. Oh, but, but the argument and the evidence was that you could have had Jeff Gordon driving that mm. car, and he couldn't have avoided that accident. So, yes, causation is an element that cannot be overlooked. And just because you're DUI, and I think still charge you with DUI, but that would not be necessarily something that would justify DUI manslaughter or vehicular homicide. 
does, does ever it, uh, uh, the amount over the legal amount play a part in a case like, let's say, if you were just over or a lot over? Well, it depends on what kind of case you're talking about. In a criminal case, if you are, uh, if your if your blood alcohol level is is double the uh, the the minimum threshold of 0 .08, uh, then they are enhanced penalties. So, yeah, that has an effect there. In a civil case, uh, if there is causation and if it's related, the the greater usually <laughs> the greater the concentration of blood alcohol the more uh, effect it has upon your normal faculties. And if your faculties are impaired and that caused you to operate a motor vehicle uh, negligently, then then the the uh, amount could be relevant. You cannot admit in a civil case the existence of a criminal case or criminal evidence or anything about that. The civil jury has to decide it on the evidence presented, not that there may be a separate pending criminal case growing out of the same set of facts. So I hope that's answered your question, and I appreciate your call today. Thank you for the call. And the phone lines are open if you want to call 622-9622. John, while we have a minute, what is your phone number at your office? Our office phone number is 352-547-4292. Our toll-free number is 855-534-2565, the law firm of Fuller & Fuller. And certainly if you or a family member or a friend or a loved one who has been involved in an accident, especially with serious injuries, uh, we would be more than happy to set an appointment uh, in, the, in our personal injury cases that we handle. Uh, if we don't make a recovery, you don't owe us anything. So uh, if you are in an accident and you care to discuss it, uh, we'd be happy to see you. And, and the normal first step is to just call you up and make an appointment? Make an appointment. And sit and, down? And, and we'll, yes, and we, we'll sit down, and then we will determine if this is a case that, that we can help you with, uh, and, and we will then undertake to start an investigation and put the appropriate people on notice. And, of course, the, the thing that is so important that I I've emphasized before and I want to say again is that the individual in an accident case has to take the initiative and be responsible for seeing that he or she gets proper medical care. Right, and, right. And you right. need to do that, and you need to do it in a timely manner, and you need to see the doctors, uh, doctor or doctors that you may be referred to, and have the tests or studies that they recommend, and uh, and and we we need the facts to prove what your injuries are, and the only way we're able to do that is through medical records and medical testimony. Yeah, and, and, and I think if, if you're out there and you're wondering whether uh, the services of an attorney are something you should pursue, the best thing is to just sit across the desk from John and in his office and, and uh, let him ask you questions. Sometimes I think it's got to come from you uh, because sometimes we might not know what to tell you. Well, I talk to my folks. I mean, people approach the practice of law different ways. Uh, we, I, I see prospective clients. We don't have uh, – we have wonderful paralegals in our office. My uh, paralegal that works primarily with me has been with me 33 years. Wow. Uh, so we have a, a long-established working relationship. Yeah. Uh, our other paralegals have been with us 10, 12 years or more. Uh, they're all registered paralegals, and they're very knowledgeable. But I see the client and prospective client personally, and, and we talk to them. And sometimes it's not a case that we can help them with. Uh, sometimes well, there, there's, there's not strong enough evidence to make it cost-efficient to pursue. Or there's good liability, but the individual, fortunately, was not injured. Uh, so you have to have all the elements. That's true. But I think I think the question you asked before, or the statement that, that the keys were in the refrigerator, those examples of cottage cheese instead of butter, you might not have found that out if you hadn't asked. So. Well, yeah. I mean, that's that's the job of a good of a good trial lawyer, yeah. and and one of the tools that we use is in, in appropriate cases. 
we use the services of an of an investigator. He's an independent contractor. He doesn't work exclusively for us, but I've worked with him for for 30 years in a number of cases, and he's he's extremely competent. And I oftentimes use his services to help me develop facts that, and find out facts. Thank you, John. We have to have to run. Call us if you Thank need you. John's information repeated over the phone. We'll be glad to do that. It's, it is 11 o'clock. This is WOCA Ocala. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. Leaders from Germany, France, and Spain, just three of the countries affected by the German wings crash are gathered in the French Alps near the site of the crash. The debris is scattered over an area that's three quarters of a mile square, and there has been icy rain, there has been snow. That will have moved some of the bits and pieces up there. The largest piece of debris said to be the size of a small car, some other pieces the size of a car door, but others are so tiny. Fox is Amy Kellogg in the French Alps. The Supreme Court reviving a pregnant worker's case against UPS and the comedy troupe behind Super Troopers, about five Vermont state troopers, asking the crowd to help bankroll a sequel to the cult. License and registration, please. But I, I just gave you it, officer. License and registration. Asking for two million in contributions to get Super Troopers 2 produced. Fox News, we look for you decide.